Welcome to Top 10 Football F***-Ups, sure to be another barnstorming 6 to 12 minutes of quality online content or some more off-season filler. Let's find out. Football is a game of passion, particularly when representing your country. Players want to prove themselves, sure, but more than that, they want to prove their loyalty to their nation. To make their citizens proud. To pour blood, sweat and tears into every second of the CONCAF Gold Cup quarterfinal. The big one. This was all proven by Henry Romero of El Salvador, who is this week's number 10. With his side trailing USA 2-0, he decided to take matters into his own hands and bring out some dirty, dirty tactics. The likes of which are only likely to see in the playground of a lower third comprehensive. It was old school, starting off with the nipple twist. From behind Josie Altador, he reached around, grabbed his nipple between his thumb and his forefinger and twisted it until Josie Altador shoved him off to the ground. He then acted all surprised like that shove had come from nowhere, like, whoa, what was that about? Then, just minutes later, he went and bit Altador on the shoulder. Altador responded by picking the teeth out of his skin and saying, My girl is mad at me. She's mad at me. She's mad at Romero. She's like, only I can bite you. Only I can grab your nipples. What's great about that statement is not only does it show Altador's light-hearted nature, it also gives my imagination more than enough to be getting on with for the next week or so. Later in the match, El Salvador captain Darwin Seren got involved in the action and bit USA defender Omar Gonzalez on the back, which is mental. How do you bite a back? It's a flat surface. You can't get any perches on that, it's like trying to bite a wall. Did he have to go up and gather some skin first? I mean, if anything, that's impressive. You know it's the off-season when your number nine comes from the Argentinian third-tier promotion playoff. But here I am, phoning it in. During the match, a drone was flying across the crowd, thanks Obama, until one wise guy fan with a great arm decided enough is enough and he shot down the drone with an amazing throw using some toilet roll. It was incredible aim to take down the drone and hasn't even caused that much financial damage as we've just had Amazon Prime Day. They got a new drone, we stocked up on plates. One question though, why the hell do you have toilet roll to hand during a football match? Either you're expecting the match to make you really sad or really happy. Like Josie Altador getting his nipples twisted by their rightful owner happy. Some people have said it might in fact be till roll instead of toilet roll, as in the roll of paper inside a till. So fair enough, that's a much more reasonable thing to take to a football match. Number eight now, Peter Crouch is gonna become a radio DJ. That's right, the robot dancing daddy Longlegs has extended his post-playing career options by taking a two week slot on Radio X. Crouch doesn't so much have a face for the radio as much as he has a body for tree surgery. That's a good joke, but you won't like it, but it is a good joke, so fuck you. Crouch is known for his love of music, being filmed crowd surfing at a Kasabian gig a few years ago, so this isn't really a f up. But it's probably not worth getting annoyed about, it's not like I was on the BBC playlist. Last week was a milestone episode of Football f Ups. It was the first time Arsenal hadn't been featured in living memory. Some of you were thrilled, but most of you were rightfully furious. It just wasn't the same without them. Well lucky for you, Arsenal can't seem to go more than two weeks without doing something awful, so here we are, back on familiar turf. At number seven, Arsenal get food poisoning or a stomach bug and puke during the match. And also Theo Walker is in a bin where he belongs and they also made them wear colourful robes and do kung fu moves and Lacazette looked like he regretted every decision that led him to this point. Oh God, I feel a lot better now. <sighs> At number six, it's West Ham's joint chairman, David Sullivan. West Ham have signed Joe Hart and David Sullivan seems to think that the England number whatever he is these days, it's hard to keep track, is the only goalkeeper ever to exist. In a statement on the club's website, Sullivan said, Hart is the best goalkeeper I've ever worked with. Whoa, hold on mate. Adrian and Randolph are right there. Their bodies are still warm because they're still alive and play for your football team, remember? Adrian responded from the grave to say, Thanks for your sincerity but you still have two great professionals respecting, fighting, and defending this badge. Spooky. Sullivan also f***ed it via a typo on the website when he said, We said at the start of the summer that we wanted to prioritise quantity over quality, and that is what we have done, and what we will continue to do. True, you got three goalkeepers, mate. Yes, you have. Joe Hart, all right, calm down, mate, I know you like him. Adrian and Randolph. Adrian, you know Adrian. Played for you all last season, he was your first choice goalkeeper. He's a tall guy. Spanish? You know. Thinks you're a prick now. Yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah. Sticking with that very transfer for number five, it's someone who definitely doesn't think Joe Hart is the best keeper he's ever worked with, Pep Guardiola. Pep was so desperate to get rid of Hart that he banished him to Italy and replaced him with Claudio Bravo, who only found out he could use his hands six months into the season. And now he's finally got shot of Hart to West Ham, but at some expense, namely 55 grand a week. That's right, City are now paying Joe Hart 55,000 pounds a week not to play for them. That's like when Abercrombie and Fitch paid the situation from Jersey Shore not to wear their clothes in public. Or when Football Daily paid Anthony Richardson to come and ruin TFR from the inside. 
I'm joking, relax. Oh, shots fired. No, it's just that he said I'd been sacked as a joke in his video and it made me, I took it to heart because I thought maybe I had been sacked. Just, no, just, he's a good guy, good bloke. I like him, I like him. Number four, Man City again. What a week. From potentially spending 80 million on two right backs to spending 55 grand a week for Joe Hart to do one, they've now encouraged some cash to go to their local rivals, Man United. City and United played each other on Friday morning, but in the build-up, City tweeted a few places that fans could watch the match. Unfortunately, the only option for fans in Ireland was to pay seven pounds a month to subscribe to MUTV, the Man United dedicated channel. Not only would they therefore be giving cash to their rivals, but also be having to watch incredibly United heavy biased coverage of the game. They also left out UK viewers altogether, so UK viewers have to move to Ireland and then pay for MUTV. This is getting expensive. That's like me paying £7 a month to watch Anthony Richardson slag me off and tell everyone I've been sacked. I'm joking. It just fits with the jokes. It just works too easy. What do you want me to do? There's nothing to toy. It's a dry episode. Once Lloyd's back, I can go back to taking the piss out of him, but no one remembers who that is. Number three, I don't know how many times I've told you, never make a bet predicting the future of football. It will always, without fail, 100% come back to bite you on the back. And that's not easy to do. It's like trying to bite a table from above. Arsenal fan Sam Leach promised that if Lacazette signed for the Woolwich club, he would get a tattoo of the Frenchman's face somewhere on his body. Lacazette then did sign and Arsenal themselves challenged Sam Leach to follow through on it. So he did. He got a tattoo of Lacazette on one of his butt cheeks. Except it isn't Lacazette, is it? I mean, that is quite clearly Darren Bent. I mean, I've seen jokes about tattoos looking like the wrong thing before, and I don't want this to become Stormzy Gate 2, but if that tattoo artist wasn't looking at a picture of Darren Bent while he did that tattoo, I'll get a picture of Sam Leach tattooed somewhere on my body. By the way, I absolutely do not give a f about going back on my word. I mean, this show is called Top 10 Football f Ups, and every week we do maximum seven that count. Don't at me. Lacazette has since got in touch saying he wants to meet Sam Leach and give him his shirt. Presumably a long shirt to cover up that awful tattoo. Oh, thank you. Leach responded by suggesting they should go for a Nando's. If they set a date to go to Nando's and then Darren Bent turns up instead, I will be the happiest man in the world. And if that happens, I promise that I will get a tattoo of all three of them in a human centipede across my forehead. But also, I probably won't. Number two is the biggest U-turn since Theresa May did just about anything. <laughs> I've got a degree in politics and now I work for the Football Republic. Very sorry, Mum. Antonio Cassano has had quite the week. He signed for Verona, then eight days later decided actually he was retiring from football. Good start. Then, just four hours after that, he announced he was unretiring from football. He's making a comeback. Thank God, that was the longest four hours of my life. He had a change of heart, and then he had a change of heart, and then he had a third change of heart. What is he? Man City? <laughs> it doesn't even work. Cassano said, it was a tough morning. I was tired and I had a meeting with the director and I said I wanted to take a break. Tired. You were tired. Everyone, make sure you get your eight hours or you might walk into the office of the club you just signed for and announce you're retiring from the sport completely. Jesus Christ. Time for number one. If you've been following this show for the last few weeks, you'll know I've been getting increasingly frustrated with social media managers' attempts at just about anything. Mainly, it's been player announcements. From Chelsea's insane boss baby Rudiger skit to Burnley's Jack Cork satnav dick about, it's been a veritable smorgasbord of embarrassing dog shit. On the flip side, when Lucas Leiber left Liverpool for Lazio alliteration, the social media manager was clearly ill that day because their version of this trend was just Leiber holding a scarf at the airport. That is less than nothing. It looks like he's asked for the photo to be taken. They basically signed him, then when he's arrived, just gone, there is a middle ground, people. You don't need a Michael Bay blockbuster to announce a workman-like centre mid. But you do need a bit more than a Snapchat picture and a punch in the arm. The big f*** up here, though, is the way Liverpool have responded to Lucas Leaving. Leaving. Ludicrous. They posted a video of the squad stood intimidatingly in what looks like either a shit hotel lobby in a war zone or an abandoned warehouse. Like it's a So Solid crew video. And then the four most boring sounding people in the world did their version of heartfelt speeches to say goodbye. So that's where we are. We've had enough of social media nightmares for when players sign. We're so bored this summer, we've now started making them for when players leave. What is going on? He is a footballer who has moved clubs. This is not a funeral. He is not a teacher on their last day. We do not need James Milner reminiscing about the kids' parties they went to together, whatever the f*** that means. The video ends with the players giving a tepid round of applause and Mohamed Salah wondering what the f*** he signed up for. That's it for Football f*** Ups. Make sure to like and subscribe and I will see you next time. Until then, I'm off to try and get a bite of Anthony Richardson's back. I'm joking again. It just, it structurally, it just, wow. God, I'll see you next week.